too much about it. Like nobody really no, talked about the property. No. And nobody... with the condition of it, it became mm-hmm. a sort of a local haunted area for the kids. Yeah, of course. In yeah. Niagara oh, on the okay. Lake, like there, this is your yeah. local haunted house. Stay away yeah. from mm-hmm. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty oh, dilapidated. Funny. But uh, but really cool. But that's the thing too. Like you know, I find in in Niagara on the Lake, like there's so many stories. Um, yeah. And well, there's another you know, home. Which one's There's this? another Victorian yeah. home um, that was renovated, um, and it's on uh, King Street actually, just up okay. from where the the um, the Masons' Lodge is. Oh. And, okay. Um, okay. It's believed that the energy of a woman's Spirit wanders this house, and the hauntings began years ago when this building was being renovated into an art gallery. Oh, I know um, the one you, you mean. Probably okay. know the the building okay. I mean. It was a it was an art gallery yeah. up until just. You talk about oh, Trisha Romance's house, ago. right? Yeah, Trisha Romance's yeah, art gallery. One. Yeah, okay. yeah. The house was yeah. built originally yeah. in 1898. It's massive. It's a massive oh Victorian. It's got to be close to 3,000 square feet. Yeah. Well, oh, you can look it up online, Rachel. Just, Rachel, look up, to, Tr- look up Trisha Romance's old art gallery in Niagara-on-the-Lake, and, and you'll see it. It was a gingerbread Victorian. Okay. Yeah, it's very cool. So the, but, um, so the haunted story with this, from what I've I've read is that in the mid 1990s, there were 911 emergency phone calls received from the house in the middle of the night, and the um, the uh, emergency um, um, people would respond, and there's nothing. There's no one there. The house is closed up for the night. Um, this happened every night at exactly the same time, five nights in a row. And then suddenly, as it began, it just abruptly stopped. And no one has ever been able to figure out what the cause of that was. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. And that property itself has a, um, you know, has some, like I say, some buried history. Uh, it it didn't go through a lot of families, from what I can see. I, I did a little bit of research onto uh, the property and, and um, <laughs> looking at the, the taxes and, and different things over the years. But it didn't go through a lot of hands. It, I mean, tr- when Trish Romance bought the property, I think that they were the ones that really put the most money into it and fixed it up. I'm not sure that they ever Wow, it's lived. really beautiful. I'm just looking oh, yeah. at it online. I did I did actually uh, type it in and look it up. It yeah, I'm really not good. sure if it if it if she actually lived in the house. I can't recall. I think they did at some point. I think they originally lived in the home and then it became um an art gallery and yeah. uh, you know for That's her work and yeah, then sorry. I know her daughter had her work in there too. Um, as well and it was open to the public and you could go through and you know but th- there's a story there and I, I've seen a number of photographs pop up in regards to the woman in the window the upper you know left hand window and every single time I see these photographs I giggle a little bit because having been in that property mm-hmm. there's a um, a clothing bust in that corner of the room by the window and it okay. always had a like a victorian dress on it and it's got yeah. it's it's essentially a mannequin without being a mannequin right so it's it has a head okay. it has shoulders and a sort of semi body but there was always a dress on it and it was always in the corner so i see these photographs and people keep going look there's a woman in the window and I'm like, yeah, but that's where that bust is, that dress, that thing. And I know that. I've been in there numerous, numerous times, and it was in there then. So I have always looked at these photos and thought, yeah. And, I mean, we've done some work in there, and we've been in the space, and I used really? to tours past the space. And, um, oh. you know, I, I can't get too much history on it. I don't see anything that talks about any ghosts in there. It seems to be um, a relatively new phenomena, like you were saying, Ian. It seems to be, mm-hmm. you know, something that's cropped up in the 90s and 
so who knows? I mean, you just, you don't know, right? Without being able to get into the property and do a proper assessment and do that. That's at right. this point, it's yeah. stories. I mean, there could be some validity to it. I don't think Trisha Romance has ever spoken about it, but then she probably wouldn't. Um, Not you know, I've and, ever heard. No. No. I and think so, no her fault on it. Uh, right now, it's just family, family owned. Somebody bought the property. Yeah. 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 And, uh, yeah. Cause we yeah. Were, yeah. Uh, we I were think it's sold. I got on the lake a couple weeks ago mm-hmm. and uh, took a walk past the house, and uh, there's some lovely patio furniture sitting out on the porch. So, uh, yeah, somebody well, is it definitely sold a number there. of years ago because Trish Romance sold that quite some time ago. It hasn't been, they, um, she hasn't used that for a gallery in, oh gosh, I don't know, it could be 8, 10, 12 years now. So that, it was sold, um, it went back up on the market again after she sold it, um, and then it went back up on the market, and I think the last time it was on the market, it was like $1.8 million or something. So it, it, uh, it sold. But, um, well, that's yeah, I mean, Niagara on the lake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, but at least that property, it's got a good size lot there and it, it is a big home, but you know, well, maintenance on those yeah. homes. Yeah. It, it's very deep. It goes back quite back behind most of the businesses there and the other properties. So it does go back quite a ways, but it was probably the, the only house on that street at that time, short of the, the one that's down at the other corner. Um, because all the other houses that are in there are sort of around the turn of the century, 19, uh, probably more of after the First World War, those houses started going in. So there was mm-hmm. probably two fairly big pieces of property there, and uh, that would have been one of them. And I suspect that they would have had a view of the lake at that point, right? Because uh, most of those houses were built like that house is built facing the opposite direction of towards the park now. But I think at one point that whole side porch that they, that was on the house originally, I think it's gone now. There's still one at the back um, would have looked over to the lake. You would have been able to look at the lake. Cause really, what are you a minute walk from the lake there? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 Yep, so, if that, yeah. If that, yeah. So I think that that house probably encompassed most of that property there at one point I think when it was built it's wow. it's a very big house um, and it would have made Probably. sense at that time so yeah I mean there's some great there's some great properties there um so what I'm going to okay so anyone who's just tuning in now or you kind of uh you know lost track of what we were talking about because <laughs> Lord knows we can talk um <laughs> The Ghosts of Niagara on the Lake. So we're talking about some of the, I guess, the most famous or infamous, uh, the ones that most people hear about. But um, we're going we're gonna to chat about the Oban Inn. And Ian, you said you didn't really, you weren't uh, too familiar with the Oban Inn. Um, no, but well, I mean, I, tell, I certainly know of it. I'm but, not uh, familiar no, I'm not it, familiar so. with uh, much of the, um, the ghost stories surrounding it. Right. So this is my experience. Okay. So this is something that happened, my experience. Okay. And I'm, I'm putting two and two together at this point, because when we used to do the haunted tours of the Oban, well, we used to do the haunted tours of Niagara on the Lake. Um, when we would get to the Oban Inn, there was always sort of, as I considered them, not a lot of information. It was kind of a, right. you know, this is this, it gives the history of the inn. Um, the inn itself is very different from what it used to look like. It was a home. It wasn't an inn. So it was a personal home. Um, it's called Oban. It was named after an area of Scotland where the Scottish family who came, they named it after their hometown. So Oban in Scotland. And so it was a home. And now it's an inn like many things in Niagara-on-the-Lake. They become B&Bs and inns and, you know, they're just seems to be a new one every every week um this opened up a lot of years ago so now it's one of those sort of high-end inns and spas and you know you can go there it's not a big place it's still quite small in terms of of what it is uh but it has some additions built onto it so we used to go by and we'd tell the story of the family and, you know, where they came from. And, and the gentleman was very, you know, very in, ensconced in business in Niagara on the Lake and sort of the whole family background. 
And I had an opportunity uh, to, <laughs> I had an opportunity, I was working for a hotel chain in town. Um, they don't own this hotel, but I had an opportunity to go into it uh, for another reason, because I was doing some promotion work, and I was working at that time for tourism, and I went into the hotel, and I got to kind of go around and see everything inside. It's, I mean, it's a pretty little place. I, you know, kind of typical of what's at Niagara on the Lake right now. Um, it's nice. It's old. It's pretty. It's quaint. Um I didn't see a lot of the rooms. I was only shown two rooms, one on the, the main floor, one on the second floor. One opens into a new sort of area of, that they've added on, uh, which from my understanding at the time when the house was built, this would have been the back of the property. So when we look at it today from the street, there's a parking area. There's sort of a, what I call a, I don't know, what would you call it? Like a, conservatory area like glass windows and whatnot um this would have been the back of the house at the time so the property actually faced more towards the lake again right because it's very close to the lake so it would have been sort of looking out on the lake so when i was going through i was sort of shown a couple of different rooms uh just uh you know one was a a basic room if you want to call it that you know the lower end of the scale uh then there was a, a very high end room that i was shown that they use for weddings and and, you know, sort of honeymoon suite kind of thing. And then we went into the kitchen area. And these and these are all sort of things that have been added to the house. This was not original to the home. So all of the, the kitchen, the commercial kitchen area and that. What I find most interestingly funny is that there is a washroom um, located in the, I want to say, lower level of the property that... Uh, Staff often say they keep hearing water running in there. And so they go in and there's no water running, right? So when I had gone into this space, I was like, yeah, this is kind of weird. It feels odd to me. Like it, it didn't feel like I was inside the house. It felt like I was outside. So I'm inside the building today. But I think at the time of the property, um, when it was a home, I think that this outside was where the well was in the house, you know, outside well uh, at the time on the property. And so there seems to be this association with water. And when we were, when we were doing our tours, um, uh, my husband and I used to laugh about that because how many times do you go, and I don't know, Ian, if this has happened to you, but how many times I've gone to a property and it just seems like ghosts want to haunt the bathrooms. Does that make any sense to you? (laughs) You know, it's uh, like, no, I've never come across that <laughs> because even at the Angel Inn, the woman's bathroom is supposedly haunted, right? Well, that, yes, that, the that's the only one that I'm familiar with is yeah. that particular so, story from the Angel, yeah, right. And so, there's that, but then, so this, this one at the Oban, and this is a staff bathroom, this is not a public bathroom, so it's just really funny. But I think what it is when I, when I sort of was able to gauge it was it's it's residual energy from likely a servant who was constantly back and forth getting water and doing different things so whether it was a well or it was a um, a pump inside a pump house like an outdoor uh you know outdoor kitchen right because most homes in that era did not have indoor kitchens um, they might have had a hearth fireplace, but if we're getting into the, you know, slightly later 1800s, we're moving into 1830, 1840. If you didn't have a basement, your kitchen was outside because it was considered at that time rude of your guests to smell your food cooking. Oh. So, ki- so kitchens were not located like they are today no. where you want people to smell the food cooking. Back ah. then, they were they were either outdoors mm-hmm. or they were in a basement because you didn't want that food, that smell of the food permeating through the house. So it oh, was considered, it, yeah, it was considered rude. So I think that that's sort of and the connection have open there. Yes, exactly. 